go pedals e do pedals today on do by the river we're gonna recap that atlanta match what a match it was down in the a only the Sixers would have done the same. We're also going to preview the Columbus crew match. That the, it is abs- It's tomorrow. We have a midday match. Things are finally getting back to normal. We got a full capacity. We're going to bring this all to you. And don't you dare go anywhere because you do not want to miss this episode of Duke by the River. And let's get this started, guys. Eh, got it. And that is right. Welcome, everyone, to Duke by the River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia Union. Brought to you by Philly Sports Network. What's up, everyone? We are finally back. It's it's a it's, it was a short week for us. Like we were, we obviously did Thursday. Now we're back here Tuesday, guys. We're back to the normality. We're back to uh, Tuesday. Thir- well, only Tuesday, and Thursday this week because we do have a midweek match. A lot of soccer going on for the Philadelphia Union. Obviously, they have uh, three matches this week. So, uh, seriously, thank you so much, guys, for tuning on in. Uh, let me. It's only me and my man, Justin Freiberg. Let me introduce to you today as he's going by bag. AKA Bald against Guzan. Justin, what's going on, baby? How you doing today? I'm uh I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I'm uh, as you can tell, I'm not in the in the location I usually am. I'm I'm in my new digs, my new crib. Yes, sir. Uh, feeling uh fe- feeling like an adult right now. Um <laughs> ready to talk about if an uh, another spicy Atlanta game, uh ready to preview a, a midweek Columbus game. I mean, midweek soccer. It's nice to to have that back. And uh, who knows? We uh, we 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 might get into some hot takes. Yeah, man. I mean, we're... Not that we don't normally, but you know, <laughs> they might be a little spicier. We'll, we'll definitely be bringing all that. We have a lot of special guests, Justin. They uh, the 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 people want to know. You going to Chicago? Okay, listen, Heather. Heather knows especially because I. I was asking her a lot about about getting a trip to Chicago, but yes, I will be in Chicago with uh, with with Tommy, with our boy Tommy. Hey, and uh, we're going to be going to uh, going to the the White Sox game, going to the Red Stars game, and the Union game. So, how'd you get how'd your wives? Yeah, I'll be. Hey, listen, listen, Philly, Philly's taking over Chicago. Hey, we we usually do. We usually do. Uh, AK Gamer, what's going on? Thank you so much for tuning on in. I can't wait to see you on um, Thursday's episode to talk about the fire, man. Poland plays tomorrow. Uh, I maybe there. I know there's four games. There's two at twelve and two at three. Well, I'm sorry, AK Gaming. The Polish striker is is, is playing in Chester tomorrow. So yeah, the best Polish striker to... isn't even <laughs> at the Euros. So you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Heather liked that one. Uh, hey, okay, okay. I like that. I like that. Um, so I don't know about you, Justin. So Sunday was a whirlwind. Of course, it was also Father's Day. So shouts to all the, the dupe dads out there. Um, but to start it off on Sunday, it was obviously beat Atlanta day, you know, playing Atlanta in, in the afternoon, playing Atlanta at night in both two of the five sports that we have here in Philadelphia. And it was, uh, we'll get to that match, but the result happened. And then the Sixers, right. And they, the biggest duds of the biggest duds Let's- losing in game seven. Uh, we're not going to get to that game, but it's crazy because there's so much negativity around the Sixers. You know, it's, yeah, trade Ben and Joel can't get it done. Doc ain't the coach. And, and there's so much negativity. And this is what Philadelphia wants to talk about right now. But Justin, as Philly sports fans that we are, there is a prime team in Philadelphia that is willing to win for us. And uh, the season is close to the midway point, but still. Like we're still off the high of, of supporter shield, dude. Mm-hmm. They're in semifinals of Champions League. Like the Sixers, the Phillies, the Flyers, the the Eagles will never compete in a North American competition and represent Philadelphia the same way the Union are about to do in August. And you listen to WIP, which I I'm sorry if you do. You listen to 97.5 The Fanatic. There's barely any talk about the Union. They're, it, it's it's ridiculous. They're still talking about 97.5 The Fanatic. As much as I love that station, it's the only station I'll listen to in Philadelphia. Like, when the Union are in the playoffs or doing some sort of run, they'll hit up 97.5 The Fanatic. They'll show us a little bit of love. And then, uh, like, like this past couple of weeks with the Sixers, they forget that we have a fifth team here in Philadelphia. 
and that type of stuff it, it hurts us it, it just flat out hurts us and yet we we have such a strong fan base that are all a bunch of Philly sports fans obviously we have great uh we have great podcasters we have great bloggers um youtubers everything uh tiktokers that cover the team as well and yet there is still a group of the fan base in philadelphia philly sports fans that still just want to neglect this team man so justin i'm gonna what i want to ask you like why why should these i'm gonna call them buffoons why should these buffoons pay attention to the fifth team in philadelphia oh, man where, where do i start with this it's so listen Sports radio in general is toxic. I've been I've I've been around it. You know, I I did it in college. I did I I did soccer, play by play broadcasting. I know a lot of the ins and outs. I know how ugly it can be because there, listen, soccer is not the popular draw in this country. You know, heck, in in this city, Preston and Steve on an MMR give more coverage to. To the union, and they're a talk show. They're a morning talk show. Like that's they, they broke the Rexel friendly. Yeah, like they broke the Rexel friendly. They have they have Seba on pretty regularly. They have Jim Jim called in this week, and you know they like he, you know they're they're friends with him, and it's it's one of those things that you're like, wait a minute, why is this? Like I, I listen to Preston and Steve all the time. I'm like, why are they covering the union? Than a sport than a than a sports you know radio, but whatever. And to to Johnny to really answer your question, I I just don't know if I care to like to cater to because listen, these fans these four for fours are going to create whatever excuse possible to to not even when right now in the last few years the union have been the only good team. In this city, the professional team in this city, like it's a straight up joke. So for all these fans who were like, oh, well, I went to London once, so I'm an Arsenal fan. It's like, why are you supporting that league? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I watch Manchester United. I went to Germany and I saw a team, a team play that just got promoted to the Bundesliga. I'm a fan of them. But I would 100% say I'm a Union fan first exactly. because they're in my backyard. They're a good team. And like I, I just don't understand what it is. And listen, we're never going to convince these fans. So you know what? Forget about them. It's, it's not worth our time. It's not worth the effort to go through and try to convince these fans when it's it's you know there's confirmation bias the idea that they're going to find something that's going to confirm whatever bias they have against soccer and so it's not worth the time to 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 confirm these behooves now if someone legitimately wants to learn like you know like our they guest listen to do by the river yeah like like our guest will be showing up later i have no problem helping to instruct someone and teach someone about the rules of soccer and how things are cuz I, listen, I'm not. I'm not someone who's like, no, you can't watch our sport. No, no one wants. To, no one wants gatekeepers in, in, in fandom. I've always been the, of the mindset. I want. If someone wants to understand a sport and they want to watch a sport, I will gladly show them all the best parts. Obviously, you're going to tell them. Listen, there's ugly parts to every sport, but I'm going to tell them what makes this sport such so amazing. I mean the. The thrill of watching a last, even a last minute equalizer, a, a late win, you know, the, the, the horrors of a last second defeat. Like, so, soccer is one of those sports where it's 90 minutes, but you go through so many highs and lows. It's, it's insane. People are like, oh, 90 minutes is so long. It's so boring. They're just passing it around. It's like, only the shortest time of all of them. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like 90 minutes. It, you honestly, some, there's times where I'll look up at the clock and it's halfway through, you know, the first half, and I'm like, like, this was really quick. Now there's some games where it's ugly, it's, you know. There's games ain't pretty, and you're like, okay, man, this half is going on forever. And but then see, there's just one moment, just I don't think it. that matters though, because you still get like Philly fans who like, listen, I love all the sports, 
but I'm sorry. Baseball is by far the most boring sport so, of, of them all. So you can't tell me that, oh, soccer's boring. That's why I don't watch it. Dude, you watch baseball, okay? <laughs> and if you can watch – if you watch six hours of baseball, you can watch a two-hour soccer game, my man. And it, it, there's just so much going on around the field. But that that's not the argument here. The arg- – what, like, what we're both trying to get at here, ladies and gentlemen – this, the Union are the only team in Philadelphia that are giving you consistent play since the Eagles Super Bowl run in 2017. And right now, they're giving you another run in Champions League. I know it's different. I know you're not used to a, a continental tournament like like Champions League, but, dude, it's so much freaking fun. And you're about to watch the Union play in what is Yankee Stadium of North America, or Fenway Park, whatever you want to call it, Lambeau Field. It, and the union are going to play in there. I'd say, I'd say, in uh, a comparison, it's you know, so a lot of people are college football fans. It's like the Rose Bowl. It is that iconic of a stadium in soccer. It is the, the it is the equivalent of well, what was historic Crew Stadium hmm. in Columbus. To an iconic place that has so much history, so much tension. And, oh, by the way, it's up in elevation, so it's like playing at mile high. Like, like it's – it's it, there's so much history ingrained uh, the, with that, like, the, you know, the struggles of the U.S. national team <laughs> going to the Azteca. Like, as a, a U.S. soccer fan growing up, it was always – Traveling there was always a nightmare, and you were hoping for a draw, and it was rare to, to win. And Heather's right; it's akin to Wembley. Every you know, every, there are you know, in every continent, there is an iconic stadium. I know down in, I believe it's is it the in Brazil, it's the Maracanã. Okay. Um, like there are certain stadiums that are just there is so much history. It's a rich tapestry. Very nostalgic. Of, of iconic soccer moments that you just go, wow, this means a lot. Like, this means a lot to clearly a lot of people. And I I think that if, if other sports fans can't understand the gravity that is that situation, then it's not really worth the time. Like, it to me, it's just, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to focus on the fans that, one, I know are interested, and two, fans that may be interested. Right. Because clearly there's, there's a group of people that, you know what, they're not going to care, so why should I waste my time if you're not going to even bother? Right. right. I, I hear I hear that. Like, So for me, w- the reason why I do five, a five-sport coverage here in the city is because of, I mean, you were there year one for me when I started doing Duke by the River and I started doing union, union coverage. After that season was over, I was just like, what do I do now? <laughs> like, I don't know, like, what you do in all seasons now. So I I, I looked at the, the Philadelphia fan base, and I just thought, like, how can we grow this fan base as a whole? And then I realized, listen, this fan base works around the four Philly sports. So let's grow it. We can be a five-sport city. It is possible. There are people that do do it. And, again, if you are someone out there that is on the fence about following this team, then I, you this is your home. This is definitely your home. But mm-hmm. let's 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 get to let's get to some some of the play that's been on the on the pitch here by our boys here. Um, speaking of that success that they have been having, uh, so Sunday to start off uh, what we were calling beat Atlanta Day, um, it was Atlanta in in Philly in Atlanta in the A at, at the Benz. Now it wasn't sold out, but there it was it was a big crowd. It was certainly a, a typical Atlanta United crowd. Um, I, I felt like it was a match where. We we looked better in the first half. We had some better opportunities. I'm thinking about the Sergio, nice chip to to Fontana, the nice little uh kick for a low kick from Casper Shabilko from that corner there, um uh, and the corner of the box. And then in the second half, uh, uh, Atlanta takes advantage of a Casper mistake, a beautiful Brooks London cross to to Anton w- uh, walks, and it's two nothing. And I'm I'll be honest, I was I was doing I was at my dad's uh, Father's Day lunch we had at a restaurant. <laughs> It was pretty dead. I asked the bartender to put the game on. I was the only one at the bar watching Union, and people were just walking by like, is that guy okay? 
He's watching soccer at a bar right now. <laughs> and I, I was just, I was like, God damn it. It's done. It's done. We, we, we just lost points. And then a minute later, Corey Burke puts in the Jamiro rebound. And then in the 92nd minute, Jakob glasses with the absolute crack and the union take away a point from Atlanta down in the A. Even though it's a draw, we'll definitely, definitely take, take it as a dub here. So, Justin, what I want to do first is I want to get the perspective of of the Atlanta side. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my brother from the A, Mr. Mark Nichols. Marky, baby, it's good seeing you, man. It's good seeing you too, man. It's always love. I mean, always I hate talking it. to you after these results, but, you know, <laughs> other than that, it's all love. At least the Hawks got, got back at Philly, so. <laughs> Yo, man, that was big time. People are excited about that down here. I bet, man. I bet. I know how Atlanta works. But, uh, well, I guess I'll ask you, man, what did you think of the match, man? Oh, I think you. Uh, I think your description is pretty spot on. I thought Philadelphia was definitely uh, the better team in the first half. I even tweeted out that uh, in during the first half that I felt like Philly was just getting too many, uh, too many looks in the box, too much. You know, uh, they were putting moves together. They were getting into Atlanta's box more than uh, more than vice versa. Um, they forced a, at least one really good save from Brad. Philly had like a really nice move, couple one touches, and then. Uh, Brad had to come off his line a little bit. Um, that would have been a crazy team goal if uh, if they had scored that. But uh, yeah, um, but you know, you know, I appreciated the way uh, Atlanta United were resilient. You know, because if you think about it, uh, it was nil nil at halftime at uh, the last, you know, in the first leg of the Concacaf series, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we didn't know how that turned out. So to see Atlanta United score first. And then uh, it was, was was so ironic. We were up one nil. Uh, you know, I turned to AJ and I said, "Look, we need, we need that second goal. I'm not gonna feel comfortable till we get that second goal." And we got it. And it, it, at that moment, it felt like uh, we got the three points. You know, you're thinking this is a big time performance against a good team. I've said this before, and I say it again: Union are a very good team, contender for at least top three in the East, right? Um, so that's like a really valuable, that would have been a really valuable result. And then Philadelphia go and score right away. And like, that's just so, that's so frustrating. You know, the one to go, you live with it. It's very annoying. You know, it's, oh God, I had a perfect angle for that Glesnes shot too. I mean, I, you know, I didn't realize it hit the crossbar well, like twice or three times, but I think like three times, it just it kept bouncing up and down. I could the version of the triple doink. Yo, man, like, but yeah, I could see, like, I was sort of on the opposite side of the stadium, so I saw, like, from behind them, just saw that ball, like, just arrow into the, man, I couldn't even hate, but that first goal that the Union scored, really frustrating from my perspective, because, like, yeah. yeah, you know, Philadelphia cut right through uh, Atlanta's midfield, Atlanta's defense, you know, Brad Guzan spills it, it's just, I think, it's a whole uh, – the whole team has to take fall for that one, in my opinion. So, Mark, I, I do have to ask, though. Yeah. So this isn't the first time Jakob has done a, a crazy rocket shot from deep. That's what I said. <laughs> so when I see Jamiro dump off the ball to Jakob, yeah. dude, my man had a, a whole acre. He could have grabbed a lawn chair and a beer and then yeah. shot the shot. Like, 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 ten, how do you not step ten up? Yard, ten yards, at least ten yards, and I'm going – like what? Lesnar just keep stepping and stepping, and I'm like, at some point he can fire it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because he like takes a, what, like maybe a couple dribbles and finally just shoots. Um, so I guess I said something interesting. Uh, at about the 70th minute, they subbed in defender Alan Franco for midfielder Franco Ibarra. Now I thought at the time I was confused by that sub because I was like, you know, don't change the shape, but definitely don't take out a midfielder when your opposition is playing with a diamond. You know, like. What he said was that Ibarra was taken out because of fatigue. And they're really, if you look at the options of, in terms of midfield on the bench, you have Mo Adams, who basically hasn't played all season. You have Osetu, who basically hasn't been available all season. And then we recently lost Emerson Hyman to an ACL injury. So, like, and that's it. You know what I mean? The other midfielders are already playing. So, you know, it did change the shape a little bit. I guess try to push Sosa up the field more, but... I do think that we ended up paying for that move. And I think in general, uh, there's some tired legs out there. I mean, Miles Robinson's played a lot of minutes. George Bello, Brooks Lennon, even Anton Walks, really. The whole back line's played a lot of minutes. Stolz played a lot of minutes. So it's, uh, I think that, not to make excuses, but in terms of how Glissness has as much time, I think it's, that's a big reason why. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. 
Uh, I'll, I guess I'll ask your uh, from your perspective, Justin. What did you What did you see from the game uh, from the Union side? Um. So the first half. So I caught the. Fir- I was only able to at least watch live the first half. Um. Because like yourself, I had a Father's Day event, <laughs> so I kind of at least was able to watch the first half live. And what I noticed was initially was that the un- that both teams were were trading counterattacking blows. I mean, it was. End to end, it felt like each team was just a little off. Like there were a few times where Atlanta, where Brooks Lennon had a great cross to Kubo Torres. There's one, I think Glesnitz gets a head on it and it hits Torres like right in the head. And he like, he was surprised at it and it bounced right to Andre who scoops it up. And, and you could see Kubo just going like, oh man, like if, if, if Glesnitz hadn't gotten a tip on that, that's a that's a goal. That that's in. And then you have that one two and and Fontana. Oh, man, I I so wish he had put that away. That was a a perfect one two combination. Yeah, man. And it it goes in. If it goes in, that changes that changes that whole that whole first half. I, I think it was very back and forth. And I think that would have that could have set up in a, a way more explosive second half. And that second half was already really explosive. Um, I will say. Uh, if interesting note was uh, Gabriel Heinze once again gets a yellow card and is now suspended for Atlanta United midweek game. Um, I can count maybe on one hand the amount of times I've seen a coach suspended for yellow card accumulation. So has that ever happened in the MLS? I don't think so. I really, I do not think so. Not even <laughs> Connor Casey. I'm just well, Connor Casey gets red cards. Let's be honest. He got a red. Let's see what he got a red card as an assistant in Columbus and as a head coach. So yeah, he only gets him. He only gets red cards. He 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 doesn't he doesn't 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 half half ass that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> but the second half was was interesting. I took a look back at the highlights and it felt like Atlanta. Whatever Heinz said at the at the halftime talk, it felt like it worked. They were on the front foot. They definitely started pressing. And you know what? Unfortunate goal, you know, own goal from Casper. That's one of those. You can tell he's trying to push that over the bar. Mm-hmm. And from where he was, it, it was like, it was unfortunate. I will say, though, a little weird the way that the, I, I believe it was Walks and Robinson were celebrating like they had scored it. Like, don't get me wrong. An own goal is great. But if you didn't like, they didn't touch it, and I'm like, you can be excited about scoring the goal, but man, you just act like you just headed that thing home. Like, mm-hmm. calm that down just a little. Bit. <laughs> and then for a while, it was back and forth. You know, Union make a few subs. It's, it's, it's on a knife's edge. That next goal was obviously crucial. Anton walks, fires home a header, unmarked, which is, which is. For the Union set piece defense is rare. That is one thing they've been better at this season, especially given their height, has been set piece marking. So that was a bit shocking. And so I'm going, oh, look at my phone going, oh no. Like what? Like it's it's one of those like, man, I really wish. And then next thing I know, I'm watching and going, Corey, like, and I watched that rebound. Man, Brad, that I will say. Time has not been kind to Brad since he left Aston Villa. Like, <laughs> it, there are just moments where you go, even a couple years ago, like, even, you know, right at the end of Aston Villa, he's making that save. He's not spilling that rebound. It just feels like, it was like, I'm like, man, that that's just not a good goal to give up. Some wear and tear on the goose, man. I mean, right. Listen, listen, he gives us balls a bad name. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> yeah. to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm listen, I, I I don't like the associated with with that with that pasty man. <laughs> What's with but, wait, what, before Stefan? What was with all the American goalkeepers being bald? Yeah, I don't right. know. I mean, I mean, I mean, I have my, I have my look. My I got the Tim Howard go on here. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's, what, that's yeah. what I like. I like I like the you know keeping it keeping it fresh, keeping it yeah keeping it keeping it short. But no, so that after that goal, after Burke, like, like Burke, perfect timing, right place, right time. Burke, that's one thing. Burke's a goal poacher. I mean, he he has those instincts. I feel like, obviously, Sergio is usually the starter because Sergio has a little bit better speed. But Corey comes in, and it, he really is our super sub. 
but it's not like the Elsinio type of super sub. It's kind of that Antoine Hope note where you know he's gonna or Jack McInerney towards the end where he you know he's gonna probably give you some really solid chances. Even if he doesn't score, he'll at least force the defense to make something. And then yeah, listen, you're you're at, at what seven minutes of six or seven minutes of stoppage time. Oof. Third minute, yeah. you have you have yeah, Jamiro lay that off to, to Gladness. And as I said, there is about a 10 yard circle around Glesnus, like he had some kind of like force field. And he takes a couple touches. And I don't know what what Georgia's, uh, uh, you know, weapon, uh, yeah, gun policies are, but that man had a cannon attached to his leg (laughs) because that thing was just on court rip. And it, you know, I saw someone make, make a joke that said, uh, uh, a, a friend of ours who was who was who was a union fan in Atlanta goes, "Thank you for for you know next time you're you know uh, Glesnitz is is uh, you know launching a rocket, please let me know that before you use my house as a launching pad." And I started laughing because I will say, and Jim said it, I think that goal was better than the LAFC goal. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that comes from the run of play. Yeah, mm-hmm. the LAFC sure. goal was a free kick. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong; that's still insane. But Glesnitz was what 35, 240 out, give or take. And like I said, that thing bounced. And I do find it funny after it bounces like two or three times in that Guzan looks behind him and starts like like trying to like take it out. Like I, I don't know what he thought was gonna happen because that ball was <laughs> everyone could see it bounce over the line, but mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a stadium instantly go silent. Mm -hmm. You could hear a pin drop. And on the highlights, the only noise I can hear are the probably less than 20 union fans. I know we're there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going like, wow. Like it, it really takes a stunner like that to silence an insanely large arena like that. And you know what? Listen, would I obviously would you prefer three points? Yes. But a road draw coming back like that against what I would still argue is a pretty solid Atlanta team. Uh, it's not a question. The, Atlanta's going to make the playoffs. Now, I think you're maybe four or five. I think if, if, if they can't stop you know, leaking these late goals, especially like against Nashville – I think losing some of the, the, these two points every time, you might be towards the bottom of the playoff. But I think they're still going to make the playoffs. I think if Joseph can get into form, that's it's that's going to be crucial. But I also think it's clear what Heinz's vision is, and I think this like these last few years of you know these early on. Listen, Atlanta got the best of the Union, and it was frustrating. Mm-hmm. But Yo, killing I feel, us. I feel like the last couple of years, especially since 2019, it's been a lot more interesting because both teams are in a state of flux. The union are trending up and Atlanta is kind of trying they're they plateaued and they're trying to go back up. Still a quality side, but it is it is way more interesting. And I think it's definitely a a, a rivalry that's starting to really feel itself out because Wait, wait, hold right on, hold now, on, hold on. It feels on, like it feels like the coaches hate each other more than the fans. <laughs> I, I want to get I want to get Mark's perspective on that because I'm here the Philly side. What do, what do you think about that statement? The, about the about rivalry? rivalry? Yeah, about the... Uh, yeah. I think I think there's there's a legitimacy to it. I mean, like the the easiest way to earn respect from somebody is to beat the pants off them, you know. And uh, Philadelphia has done that, but no, Philadelphia's had some really good quality wins. The last couple of years, I mean, of course, Philly, you remember when I was up there with you in 2019 mm-hmm. um, and that, that experience overall, just like going to um, to Chester and like seeing that stadium and that atmosphere is really cool. And I mean, Philadelphia put in a very credible performance that day. Uh, obviously, I referenced the first leg of the uh, of uh, the Champions League. So, I mean, yeah, I definitely think of rivalry is forming. Some animosity never hurts. Um, you know, I love substitute teacher Jim Curtin calling somebody else an asshole. Like, 
<laughs> what that was shocking to me, but I like it, you know. Like I'd rather have that than the same old boring platitudes between MLS coaches. So um it, it's it's funny too how they're like they'll talk like they still respect each other, but then be like, eh, he's wrong about this. So but, funny, that. so yeah, funny. you know, it's and, uh, that's, and that's the thing, like everyone thinks of Jim as this like laid back, reserved, and he is a genuinely nice guy. And having met him, you know, interact with him on various occasions super he nice. is one of the nicest people mm. but you see him like there's behind the scenes videos and on the field jim like when that whistle blows jim is a different person <laughs> and you could see he you could see what you know he comes from you know you could see you could see that influence of bob bradley and him mm. because he like it's not like i'm gonna be an ass and i'm gonna like just scream and scream it's like Oh, I have those moments where I'm going to call you an ass. I'm going to I'm going to just lose it. The amount of f bombs I've seen him drop, right? And, and it is like he's got that fire, but it's like mm-hmm. you see Bob Bradley on the sideline. It's calm, it's reserved until there's moments where, mm-hmm. yeah, he loses, he loses cool. And I think it's like I will say that's the interesting thing between between Jim and and, and Heinze. It's like Heinze is definitely exactly what you expect in a, yep. in a former player who you know comes from he's, he's the be the elsa school and bielsa isn't afraid to speak his mind and right and i think i think also it's interesting to see that like it, it with, it's gonna be an interesting code because i'm curious if there's a record for the amount of yellow cards the coach gets in a season Seriously, because yeah. i think whatever it is heinz is gonna beat it by a ton but it makes the league more interesting. It's not that high profile name that you would expect from a coach, but it's a coach that fits the style Atlanta. I mean, that's why Tata was great. Like it was that free flowing style that worked mm-hmm. well. Obviously DeBoer was a far cry from that did right. not work. And that experiment, I mean, yes, you want an open copy on Campeones cup, but it just didn't, didn't feel like that was really it. And right. then you go back to, that you know the coach kind of coaching that really made them better and listen it's early you're also having a you know right now i still think the offense relies just a little too much on joseph which Mm -hmm. will be a problem if he does not get to his form i think that will be the biggest x factor for atlanta this season because i think it's clear that they just don't have that that one two punch that they had when when Almarone was here, and it is yeah. clear, it is clear they have been trying to replace him now for three years, and it has not worked at all. Yeah, um, I think I this is one thing I've been banging on about. Like I do feel like LA United, if they are to sign, so they can buy down Alan Franco and free up another DP spot, and I think that they should use that on an attacking midfielder or some sort of forward, like a player. Just an example, I like Roger Martinez a lot. If he were to somehow come to MLS and sign with Atlanta, I would be ecstatic. But I think they need that kind of impact player. Like, because, yeah, you know, like Barco isn't quite Miggy. Um, the other midfielders we have isn't quite like Tito Vialba, for example. Um, we don't have, like, Sosa is great, but we don't have a midfielder quite like Nagby. So, you know, like, you, you look at the championship team, and then you look at the roster now, and you look at, well, what's the difference? There are some quality players there. But there's some other players that uh, either we need to find out more about or, quite frankly, uh, maybe just aren't good enough or are playing a role that they're too important. You know, so it's like if a better player came in, then uh, like would someone like a Jake Mulraney f- thrive, for example, in a, like a super sub role uh, type of, you know, um, a spark off the bench kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I definitely think this team is a work in progress to say the least in terms of getting back to, uh, MLS cup winning type of, uh, quality. Absolutely. Uh, quick, quick question before we let you go. Um, the new kits of for Atlanta. Uh, think? I, I copped one. Uh, I like it. I like the, nice. yeah, I like the color schemes. Um, so the King peach with our white and peach Jersey, is my personal favorite. And this, uh, the unity kit has the lettering in peach. So I like how the peach looks against the maroon. Um, I love the idea behind it. It's really embarrassing 
that uh, they misprinted the Hebrew. That's just I, I don't know. I as 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 someone as as a, as a as a Jewish kid, I found that part really funny because I'm like, there's only select people that are gonna know. That's, that's oh, but they pointed it out right away. It was the funny thing. Like as soon as it dropped, they were like, oh, that's wrong. And like my thing is, how did it pass all the checkpoints? I would think you would need that to pass in order for a jersey to be approved and printed and sold. Like. You'd expect that from like a like a knockoff kit, but not, right. like, not a not a legit kit. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but no, I like it. Um, I'm gonna take it to for the culture. Let them do like a name set, make it really unique. You know, very nice. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, but no, I mean, I like it. September 25th, we'll see you up here. Maybe. Oh, <laughs> I'll keep you posted. Hey, uh, hey well. Hey, listen. There's a there's a there, let's say there's a there's a beer from the beer garden. Wait, with your name on it. If you're oh, uh, if you're if you're coming up here, uh, listen. That Johnny Johnny no Johnny, that's it, it's a great place to uh to 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 hang around. So yeah, I didn't realize we come up there in September. That actually, you've uh, put a thought in my head, Philly. I believe <laughs> I believe we play you guys. We play you guys one more time, which would be in Ch- Chester. Let me double check. Yeah, summer twenty fifth. Yep. Of course, Google still names it PPL Park. We love that for us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Mark, where can people find you, my man? Uh, you can find me at Nichols Odeon, N-I-C-H-O-L-L-S-O-D-E-O-N. It's the same on Instagram and Twitter. Um, that's where I mainly stay. So hey, come on. Hey. Uh, do us a favor, Mark. Let us let uh, everyone at uh, Atlanta Fan United TV, Atlanta United Fan TV, sorry, that we said hello and uh, dupe. <laughs> uh, I don't know about the second part. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, it's always a pleasure talking to you. We'll we'll definitely catch up later on. All right, my man. All right, peace. All right, all right love you, man. See, you. ladies and gentlemen, Mark Nichols. It's good talking to him. But uh, yes, uh, it was. It's definitely a great point to pick up the way we did it. And uh, Justin, we're off. We're coming back home to a full capacity. Dude, the, you realize the last time we had a full capacity was the magical afternoon in Chester, Pennsylvania, when we beat the Red Bull in our first ever playoff win. And this is going to be the first game back. Dude, as uh, uh, as Liam would say, it's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming. I don't want to get to that to, to, to the, the, the atmosphere tomorrow because we're going to get to that in a little bit. Um, but so this Columbus crew team, right? Look. These guys are the real deal. They they are one of the, the best teams in the Eastern Conference in the MLS. It, it's for a reason. They have a great style, great coach. Um, I thought Luca Zellarayan, that was an absolute beautiful performance in, in the MLS Cup playoffs last year. Uh, and this is going to be a tough challenge. Now, if you guys have not yet, I will share it here. Um, do yourself the favor, especially if you are a Union fan. Um, go check out Tim Lovinguth's uh, article on PSN here. Um, it's uh, it's it's great. It's it's his preview up on here, and he's got all his his predictions on here and, and all the great little facts. But of course, the title of the article is very telling. Justin, can the Union beat the Crew for the first time since 2019? It's crazy to think that you know we didn't beat them last year, but um, this is this is a tough team, and they just got done obviously taking care of Chicago. Most people do take care of Chicago, but it was really a great game by Zardes. But these guys have firepower, and they got some good star players. But tomorrow should be a lot of fireworks. I want to ask you, what what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? How do we beat the crew? So that's always an interesting question because with the way Caleb Porter sets up that team, him and Jim Curtin are very similar styles. It, now... Columbus is not really a high press, but they're still they're still really tough. Like they are not afraid to sit in. They love they love possession, but they're not afraid to sit in and you know and and, and smother the ball. And, and the biggest thing is getting through Darlington Nagby. Darlington Nagby and Lucas Elleron are the, the the two players, and I've said it. Every time that that we've that, that we've played them, you gotta you gotta shut down Zellerion. You gotta give him absolutely no time and space, and you gotta shut down Nagby. 
Because what Nagby does, Nagby just he's he's that deep line regista. He's that that passer. He That's will about. he will pick out a twenty yard pass to to Zellerion, and then Zellerion takes that and and looks and finds Zardes on a run, or he they find you know, Etienne Junior on the wing. Like you you gotta cut you gotta sever that connection, and if you don't, then then Columbus is good is gonna run all day and. I think at home, again, after especially after that, and I think there's going to be a little bit of rotation given that, obviously, unfortunately, Anthony Fontana suffered a concussion. Um, but I do believe Sir, uh, Sergio will, will still be good to go. Um, I believe outside of that, I believe God's dog and Elsino, I believe the only – and DeVries are really the only – so you still have most of your attacking options – I think it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting game to see how that that midfield's rotated. Um, I that it, it does bring a lot of question of like, do you throw in a Jack McGlynn? Do you throw in a Quinn Sullivan? Does Paxton get that start that we've been we've been talking about? I'm so curious, excited, Justin. I I am curious too that it 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 looks like. Matt Real might even feature. From what Jim said, Matt Real, he loves him like as a shuttler. As a as a shuttler or a left sided center back in the back three. So I don't think Jim Jim's I don't think Jim's gonna switch up the formation, but who knows? I think that'll be the key is is, is I mean it, it's really that mid it's always the midfield for me. It's that midfield that, that really is the biggest factor. Right. I mean, I mean, just the fact that we won't have uh, El Brujo, we won't have Gazdak, we won't have um, Fontana definitely does leave it thin. But I mean, I, I we're fine at the 10 at the six. It's really that left shuttler position. You're right. I mean, I like what Matt Rial did in his couple of, of out, outings out there. He came on the sub on. I think it was more for Champions League. But he's fine in that position, and he doesn't really – he's got less responsibility. More, there's more responsibility to play out wide. Um, and Jack McGlynn, listen, he he pressed in his couple of games that he played in, but it wasn't nothing spectacular. And I'm, and I'm worried about a quality team like Columbus. If we do start a Jack McGlynn, he, they would take advantage of that weakness there, um, just pressuring him. But – um, it, it's yeah, it's it's definitely gonna be tough, and it's it, it's really gonna it's gonna take all ninety minutes. Um, it's gonna be one of those games. It, it's always like that with Columbus, and we're gonna we just have to find a way to uh to, to find those find them find themselves just feeling themselves a little too much. We'll get them into those traps. We always know when we we don't dominate possession, we always find a way to get the ball back, and then we always find a way to score some goals that way as well. Um, but what do you what do you see happening tomorrow? Um, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of rotation because I think that's what Chicago will be for. It, it's it's going to be a very low scoring game. That and these games are they usually are <laughs> are typically it's either going to be a one one or a two to one. If it's a victory, it's it's a one goal. There there's not much separating. I want to say this will be a victory, and if so, it would. I'm even gonna go. I might be a one nothing, a one nothing win. It, it's it is going to be an ugly game, and I'm not even confident in the in the one nothing win. I think it might could be a nil nil draw, just because these games with Columbus, I said, are ugly. It's never pretty. It's just how it's how they operate, and now I feel much better being at home. Yes, I, I think. I mean, yeah, we yeah we didn't we didn't win last year. But that's also because we, for some reason, we played both games at at Columbus. I still don't understand that. But it that is whatever, and I I think it's it, yeah, it's gonna be a really interesting game because the it's it is a battle of the midfields. It, it is it is which midfield, which creative force is going to win. And it's it, it's it's almost I mean you saw it in the first game. It's a, it's a negating effect. These teams are each other's kryptonite. It's just that's how they that's how they operate. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's it'll be exciting though. It'll be exciting. And, and the most important part, the edge that we will have, Justin, is we will have a full 
capacity for oh fans. Oh my god, to come back I home. I can't even believe that. Like that's I am I am so excited about about it a full capacity stadium even for a midweek game. It's oh, just yeah. like it, it's just it's it's yeah, it has been what a year and a half since 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 we've had any kind of full capacity yeah. and that stadium even for a midweek game could be rocking. It could be. It could be. And the best part about full capacity games, Justin, we get to get great fans in the stands like the guests we're about to bring on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely Devin Caney on the Duke by the River. Devin, what's Hi. going on? Oh, my God. Guys, thanks for having me. Of course. What an no. entrance. Of, oh, that's what I do. <laughs> I, it's all about the energy. It's of all course. about the energy. <laughs> and you bring the energy with the shirt. I love it. Oh my Where... god! Yeah. Okay. I, I. This is like the practice jersey, right? Right. The warm. Um, yeah. The yeah. Day, yeah. I'm practicing. I'm warming up for tomorrow. Tomorrow I get to do the, <laughs> the real thing. All right. So you are Dawn now, a, a six for six fan. We gotta we gotta show respect to the wings here. Mm-hmm. You oh have yeah. Dawn, you have Dawn oh, now, man. the six for six life. So how is the six for six life treating you? How 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 have you been getting into the union now? Okay, so I've I've always loved soccer. Um, I used to play it. Not I wasn't that great at it. Um, but like the World Cup is one of my favorite sporting events ever. Mainly the women's um, recently, just because you know U.S. Because you know. Um, but yeah, and I I've always been intrigued by the union, and I we actually had an intern at the NLL last year who's a massive fan and he would travel with us when we went on shoots and i remember i think it was the union were playing in seattle and seattle's stadium was like completely i think seattle or portland one is some, somewhere in the Pacific. it could be either because both of those guys know how to show off for sure yeah, yeah. Exactly. Both, both stadiums are, are packed to the gills yeah and i was like oh my gosh and and then i knew last year the union did really well um so especially now that the Sixers are done, I'm ready to get on board. <laughs> well, Devin, you, you bring up a good point there with the Sixers season being done. We we started this episode discussing the landscape of Philly sports. Like we would love to be part of the talk of Philly sports. We mm. know how Philly sports do work. And there is the stigma. This can only be a four sports city. Um, I, I did want to, to congratulate while I have you here uh, of, you know, the, it was a great week you did with the Mikey Miss show. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, just seeing you on TV was so surreal. Um, but listen, I, I, as I love Mikey Misty, and I, I've, I've told you, like, I've listened to that show since I was a teenager. And it, there are shows like Mikey Miss, you know, Cataldi, Gargano, we, you name it. Yeah. They know that they steer away from that. Yeah. So, Devin, can this city truly be a five, six sports city? Can we expand I, here? Yeah, I think it can be a more than six sports city. I mean, I have said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm surprised Philly doesn't have a WNBA team and a women's soccer team. We should. Trevor, because- we, we, we brought that up with Renee Washington, and we, oh, were, all like, we were all like, "Where? Where is this? Like, this? Is, we we had listen. We had the independence. We had the, we had the the charge. Yeah, we've had women's soccer in this city before." but not really in the city. So it's yeah. definitely time for it. I, I think working for the NLL and watching the other teams, like you go to cities, even like Buffalo, where they have really passionate fans up there and Buffalo shows up for their lacrosse team. Like they're the bandits, which is Buffalo's NLL team mm-hmm. made it to the finals in 2019 packed stadium like at like you couldn't I went out to a bar and like I said I work from the NLL and everyone's like oh my god go bandits and I just remember thinking like Philly can be like this for sports other than the Eagles and Sixers and Phillies because I do feel like even the Flyers could use a little bit more support and it's shocking because we're so passionate like our fans are the most passionate fans I've ever met in my life I know I'm biased but like it's I anyone can tell you that and the fact that our passion kind of is only limited to the big teams is kind of infuriating and confusing um, to me. So I think we have a lot more fandom to give. So Philly, show up. 
and advocate for more women's professional team, professional women's teams. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, the reason why I don't really watch the WNBA or the NWSL is because I don't have that team in Philadelphia. I don't really watch the NFL, the NBA. Like, I don't really casually just watch the, the game six of the Western Conference Finals if the Sixers aren't in there. Right. Uh, I, I watch my teams and I don't have that here. So I definitely agree with you there. What, what is it? What, Devin, what do you think it is? Like, why do these guys like shot? Because the union, listen, they won. Like, they brought a trophy for the first time since the Super Bowl. Um, They're in the semifinals of a North American competition. What is it that these guys still are just be like, no, nah, we're not watching this crap. Like, <laughs> what is that? I don't know. I don't know. And I wonder that, too. Um. I think a lot of it has to do with coverage. So the Wings uh, last season were on NBC Sports Philly, which was huge. Um, they also, I also just keep talking about the Wings and NLL because that's like my closest, you know, experience. Oh, no, I, I love it. I used to have season tickets with my dad back in the day before they moved. So trust yeah. me, you're, you are, I, I play lacrosse. It's right up my alley. Yeah. And like once they're back next season, you definitely should go back. I think that's the other part about lacrosse at least um is they were gone the wings didn't exist for a few years then they came back and then the pandemic hit so hopefully now that we're like fully back um everyone will kind of catch on but i think it's a lot about coverage and um exposure you know like i, I think if you're trying to watch a soccer game and it's only available and I'm, this is completely hypothetical but it's only available on like a streaming platform people aren't going to watch that where you go to a bar in philly and they have NBC Sports Philly on, and they always have, you know, Phillies, Sixers. So I think it's just getting it out there more. And I know the MLS, like in recent years as a whole across the country, not just in Philly, has really just blown up because they're on ESPN. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of factors that I don't want to, like, bl blame anyone in particular. I think, you know, like you mentioned radio hosts, I think they could talk about um, – these other sports more, but it's kind of like a vicious cycle because like they don't talk about it because their producers tell them not to talk about it and their producers tell them not to talk about it because they don't think listeners want to hear about it. So it's just like a, a constant cycle that we need to break. But Devin, yeah. you, I mean, you talk about the blame game. That's what we're here for. That's what, that's what <laughs> we do. And, and Johnny knows my, my feelings about single entity and the way that this league operates under Every it, it's single entity stuff gets it's a whole complicated nonsense of we're all the same and we're all getting the same and the TV rights have been awful and the news with some and U.S. soccer splitting their partnership which does affect the TV rights going I believe not not the 2026 but I believe after that so the TV rights deals are coming up and with the union it's you talk about coverage. They're on PHL 17. It's because it's the, the most affordable option for them right now. They used to be on, on ABC more. They used to occasionally be yeah. on NBC Sports Philly. And th and that's the thing. There are certain teams that, that get this coverage. And, you know, Philadelphia, for all I love about this city and I love about the union, the union, feel they we feel like a small market despite being one of the biggest right. media markets in the country. And yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing is you see the popularity of, you know, you see Sturginio Dest and Christian Pulisic and Weston McKinney. You see the explosion of the youth on this mm -hmm. men's national team. You see the women's national team bossing everybody around. I mean, let's be honest. They are, they are the most dominant force in professional sports. And there is no second even remotely close to it. Mm -hmm. and you look at all this and go, why isn't soccer getting more coverage? Like it, on ESPN, the only time that I've seen the union – is either Andre Blake making a crazy save or Jakob Glesnes pulling what he did against Atlanta and, you know, yes. detaching his foot and, you know, <laughs> touching Noss to it and just launching that ball into the top corner. Like, it, it yeah. feels like it takes extraordinary moments. And it's like, right. is it, this is the most popular sport in the world. In the world. Well, so it's funny because I think it was – on over the weekend, I, I had ESPN on and uh, in Atlanta – MLS game was on and their crowd was insane. And I was just like, how do we get that? Like, how Wait, should, we tell we her, Justin? That point? should we tell her about it? All right. So Dad, it. I don't, I don't know if you know, but so Atlanta, I know. Atlanta United share the beds with the Falcons. Cause it's and, the same okay. owner. Arthur Blank is the owner of, of, of both teams. Yes. So okay. they outsell them almost every game. 
Oh, handsome, like they they crushed Atlanta's attendance. Like Atlanta United set the MLS record for largest attendance when I think what was it like seventy something thousand? Like seventy seven. And they they oh packed that God. into the gills. The Falcons don't even get remotely close to lucky you they get to, thirty or forty. Like they're lucky. Yeah, if you're talking to anyone in Atlanta, Atlanta United has quickly become the most Lots popular Hawks, team right. <laughs> in that. In that, well, yeah, right now it's not the Hawks, but they they've clearly become like almost the number one. Wow, I didn't know that. That's yeah. insane. So this is what's infuriating, Devin. So I I go I went to Atlanta for 2019 for the Union match. I go down there. I'm in the Uber. They put sports radio on. They're literally talking about Atlanta United problems. They're talking, yeah. they're previewing the uni match on a live sports station in Atlanta. You go everywhere. There's Atlanta United posters here and there. The At the time, Joseph Martinez was the biggest athlete in Atlanta. You see uh, billboards of him everywhere. And I go into Philadelphia and people don't, there's like nothing. 60% of the city that doesn't even know who the union are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's like that, that type of stuff. That's that's why I got into the, the four other sport coverage because of that type of – because I know, I know how the Philly sport fan works. I, I know mm-hmm. how we are. We're always looking for the winning team. And it's funny, this winning team isn't getting that, that type of coverage. But we, We're the only winning team at this point. Yeah, at this point, yeah. But it's just yeah. crazy. No, it is. It is. And, like, I've wondered it so often. I think, like, a lot of it does, like I mentioned, come down to media rights. Um, but I think a lot of it also comes down to – Philly fans just being kind of stuck in their ways. Like we know how we are and they don't know no, that never. Think about- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, like, we've had the same staples on radio and I'm saying this, is, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but like Angelo Cataldi has been on the radio for so long and I'm not saying he should go off of it, but he probably has I am. spoken about I am <laughs> the union. I can't say that, but he has probably never know. spoken about the union. So like, <laughs> I, I just think it's, I feel like it'll change probably in the next five to 10 years for sure. I know that's a little far away, but no, I, 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 I envision that too. Like five, 10 years, like MLS will start becoming normalized. It'll like more, a lot of, uh, a lot of markets will be like five for five or whatever you, they want it to be. I mean, even cities like Detroit or Pittsburgh don't have MLS cities too. And those are strong sports. But they, but the thing, Johnny, and then I think about that and it's why I think Devin, you're right with that growth in the next five to 10 years is because it's, it's people, you know, it's people, our age, it's people, it's the the younger kids. Mm -hmm. It's soccer is becoming more prevalent because of, you know, the, the ability to catch, you know, YouTube highlights of Serginio Des, you know, tricking over defenders and passing it to Messi. And that's the name they recognize. And you talk about, yeah. Okay. Detroit doesn't have a team, but they have an, like an MPSL team. They have lower leagues Mm and lower league soccer. And as John knows, I I love a good I love a good soccer jersey. And if it's if it's a if it's a if it's a, if it's a yeah. non MLS team, I will gladly purchase that jersey because I I believe, especially in supporting lower leagues, I think it's it's a crucial way to help grassroots to help this sport grow in in, this, in the country. But you look at some of these you know these some of these teams like prime example, one of the biggest teams on social media in this country is Forward Madison. That is true. They're a USL League Two team, and you're 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 down there, and you're like, like their social media team is crazy. And I have I have their pride kit. It was amazing. Every time they jersey, I'm like, I really got to buy that. Their marketing yeah. is fantastic. I, it doesn't okay, the marketing is great, and the lower the, the divisions are marketing great, and that is what yeah. I think is starting to help propel this the sport is oh, that's so important yeah it's just it is starting from the bottom and working mm-hmm. up and i think it's helping to it's helping to you know to fund these academies to to start to really break down this pay for play structure in this country which if you look at you know you know zlatan one of the biggest superstars in international sports when he came to this country he went if i had to pay for play in soccer i would have never made it Right. Because it would have been impossible. Mm -hmm. And you start to see the more that we start to tap into these other markets and it becomes more accessible, the sport will grow. And I believe in the five next five to ten years, soccer will overtake a bunch of sports in this country because it it is it it, it is just at the precipice where it cannot stop its growth. It just is gonna keep going. Yeah, no, for sure. So 
There is a couple, a couple points to that. First of all, I've said it once, I'll say it always. Soccer uniforms are hands down the, and I don't even know if you call it uniforms, kits, whatever, are the most attractive, like looking. Like I would wear a soccer jersey over a basketball, football, hockey jersey. Because it's, it's, it's accessible streetwear. That's the yeah. design of it. Yeah. It, it can be worn regularly. Like, it's anyway. And it's exactly. not, it's like a practice jersey. Um, but also, so I don't know if you guys know this, the commissioner of the NLL, the National Lacrosse League, used yeah. to be used yes. to have a union. Yes, he he had an unceremonious exit. I know, I know, I know. The union. So we, we all love we love love Nick. Yeah, you know, for what he did to help start this. He team. meant well. Yeah, we meant well. We we will always give him that. He always meant well. That aside, I know the NLL like looks at the NLS as almost kind of um like a precedent because they're both growing sports that hope to overcome, you know, other sports that are kind of dying down like baseball. Um, (laughs) And I think a, a big, big thing you hit the nail on the head with is grassroots marketing and getting in at like the, a youth level and getting like kids involved because lacrosse is trying to do that. Like the wings always hold clinics for kids. And like Mm -hmm. when you go to a wings game, you look around and most of the fans are like parents with their kids Um, And then like younger, like millennial Gen Z's. Um, But something that I found, I know I mentioned how Buffalo fans for, you know, lacrosse were just like really passionate. Um, There are several other cities that have like insane fan bases and sell out their arenas all the time. And I noticed something that they do is, and I know Buffalo is different because they're all under the same Pagula ownership. So it's easier, but Mm -hmm. all of their other pro sports rep rep their lacrosse team so like the buffalo bills like when they're walking into the tunnel they'll be wearing like a bandits hat and i feel like i never see that from philly athletes like i never see and i know they're under different ownership but like you i never saw carson wentz walking in with a union shirt on you know i think it's right now it's like boston scott i think is like the only one who, current Philadelphia athlete who maybe Joel because of how much he, yeah. he's into soccer. Or, they do give out a lot of free jerseys. Free jerseys. I do. Yeah, know. Like, there are, like a couple athletes that are like the only ones where I'm like, I, I, I can see it. Boston Scott's the most vocal mm-hmm. because he's been more consistent about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it like it's, I, there are definitely, I've seen some athletes repping, you know, soccer or lacrosse, whatever, but it's just not like all the time. Like I see in other markets like Buffalo. So, so, so let me ask you, Devin. So tomorrow it's your, it's your first day. It's like, it's like the first day of school first oh my God. Day yeah. at the Sioux. Uh, yeah. First off, how do you feel in t- anticipation of tomorrow? I'm nervous. I literally had crowdsourced. My friends were laughing at me. I'm cause like literally none of my personal friends who I'm going to some of them to this game tomorrow like are on Twitter. So I'm like, guys, I crowdsourced information for us. And I send like paragraphs. I'm like, do not under any circumstances wear red. Just say dupe all the time. This song is the word dupe over and over again. Um, I, I saw I saw that thread. I I, 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 so funny. I, I saw everyone's responses and I and a lot of the them are union Twitter can be pretty small. And I, I saw and I'm like, yeah, no, they're not wrong. I, and I think I, I kind of too I'm just like just, just, and just enjoy. I'm like that. Yeah, which I did. I did see. Uh, are you? I, are you going to be stopping by the Sons of Ben? Absolutely. Tell, tell yeah. you tomorrow. We yeah. Dev, Devin. Uh, shouts to to Devin from the Sons of Ben Pod and also the Tailgate Master. They're breaking out the uh, the new pizza oven that they that they <gasps> wow. got. So they will be making they will be making some pizzas. So. Oh my god! Yeah, wait. I'm excited for that. Wait, There's will you be there? I will be there. <gasps> I. I will so, say this. This, as I said, people, this head is not hard to 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 notice. I will, <laughs> it, it'll have a, I'll have a headband, but as I tell Johnny, it, it is. I'm not a hard hard person to uh, to notice. Okay. Devin, Devin, you'll, so uh, Justin will tell you. So like union match days, I'm like, I don't stop moving. <laughs> oh yeah, Johnny. Like Johnny will be walking around, and he has everywhere. His little GoPro, and he has. Uh, we we upgraded now. We got actual. We have an, an actual camera. Though actually, it's funny. The GoPro is still next to me. I, I haven't used this in like a year and a half. But yeah, yeah. Johnny um, walks around. It is like <laughs> you, you will get dizzy just trying to keep up with. with, with, with oh my god! Get I love steps, it. Get my steps in, man. Get my steps in. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, what do you know about the union? I wanted to ask that as well. 
Okay, so I actually had a question for you guys. So I know awesome. that they are good. Um, <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> but like what are, and I know that Columbus are the reigning champions. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's at stake in this game tomorrow? And what should I watch for? Um, That's a good question. So it's a midweek game. Um, so they played Sunday and they're playing again Saturday. Mm -hmm. So there could be a bit of squad rotation um, right now. The union since like early May, since the CCL run have been on, on the up Columbus after a bit of a rough start, they've had a lot of injuries, but they just ended what was, so it's was Mop Frey stadium. It's now historic. It was historic crew stadium. They're moving into a new stadium. They tore it down um, to nothing. win. they've been playing better, um, it's really, it's, it's a test of two similar styles. Um, and, and I said it earlier, the biggest thing is whose midfield is going to dominate because Columbus has Darlington Nagby, arguably one of the best deep line passers in the game. And Lucas Zellerion is just unreal. I mean, if you watch the MLS cup final last year, if you watch his two free kick goals against NYCFC this year, the man just pulls, you know, rabbits out of a hat and is unreal. And Giassi Zardes, who people know I'm not a giant fan of, but the man as a striker puts ball puts the ball in the back of the net regularly. But the US MNC bias away, Justin. <laughs> well, well, yes, yes. That is I, I am showing a bit of my, my men's national team bias because I don't think he's a great international striker, but he's a great lead striker. Um, no, the biggest thing is yeah, is gonna be it's two teams that play identical. It honestly, it might be a very ugly game. Your your first soccer game might be. Oh no! It, you it, think they're gonna it, lose? Well, I say ugly in terms of it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be pretty soft. Be a barn burner. Yeah, okay. it's it's one of those. It's one of those drag out knockdown kind of fights where it's. I feel like that's it, how all soccer matches are. It, there are some. I mean, the Union play right now more of a a free flowing counterattacking style but if they want to they can slow a game down and they can really drag it out and so can columbus okay. and when you have a team like that it just it it can make for some slow error soccer than normal. pretty pretty much devin these are two of the top eastern conference teams so it's like you know like if the sixers play the bucks uh you know in the in a regular season game you're right. It's obviously going to be really exciting. Both teams want to show what they ha kind of have. So mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a close game, and it might be a game that does come all the way down to the wire. Um, the Union will be without um, Anthony Fontana, who is a local kid. Uh, he 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 was going to show what he has because he's kind of like kind of fell out of graces a little bit because there's some new players that are coming in. Um, so you might see some of the younger kids, that the, the famous homegrown kids. You might see a lot of those kids, but – um, I really feel like they're just going to feed off of the environment. This is going to be the first full capacity game since our first playoff win in 2019. And it's it's going to feel different for us fans. I mean, for myself, like, you know, like the whole no mask thing in a, in a stadium, mm -hmm. a little weird, oh. obviously, but uh, it, it's going to, it's going to feel right. Like, you know, seeing, you yeah. know, people like, like Justin and people like I, I saw in 2019 that, you know, supported me back in, in those days. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's. It'll be a, a day of jubilation for sure tomorrow night. And I'm. I'm. We're all definitely excited. We're ready. And I'm excited to see you enjoy your first game too. I know this. Is, I think is actually gonna be my first full capacity sporting event without Same. a mask or anything in over a year. I think I went to one Eagles game back last season, but it was like weird. It was like right, yeah. very like few people, just not not great. I would, so. I would just watch the Philly sports guys TikToks. I'm like that's very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, wait. I have I have a few more questions for you. Fire away. I know Fire you. Away. I'm your guest, but I'm asking you guys questions. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what time do I get to the tailgate? Okay, so the, the tailgate. So the tailgate, uh, so we they it's usually it's at least on a normal day. If it was a, like a Saturday, they would be starting at least Early. three or four hours prior to game time. I think tomorrow's is going to be like five to seven. They usually try to wrap up about a half hour prior to kick off. To, to kick off, um, it's not a hard lot to miss. It's it, it's right and it's right across from the, the practice field. It's a big gravelly lot right on the river, so it's not it's not a hard lot to miss. But yeah, five to seven, I think it's tomorrow. 
Okay. That's good because I'm trying to coordinate with my other friends and everyone because it's a Wednesday. Everyone's like, well, I have to work. Um, <laughs> do we bring anything? Our own? Um, uh, bring your bring your own bring your own beverages. Um, you can. Like how how lit do people get at Union Games? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I, it's Philly sports, so yeah. yeah okay. okay. Let's just say there there's some there's some memories. Uh, St. Patty's Day, oh, 2018 was a, was a, was a was a rough one for me. That was uh that's one I I, I don't talk about much anymore. Uh, <laughs> But no, in a midweek game, it's it's relatively. I mean, yeah, with the Sons of Ben Lot, um, there is you know you have the 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 trailer where you have they have the they have various beers. On, Do we have kegs? Have still kegs? Yeah, they okay. they they have the trailer. The trailer, it, it's right, right, right. Uh, they have usually, I think, at least like four or five beers on tap. Um, they got a lot of stuff from local, uh, basically ones that help support us usually it's i think yards and 2sp right now occasionally we'll have some some small local like they had a if they had a keg of uh, a beer from zed's brewing in marlton and that's their the owners there are both some of the band members so it's it's always neat um usually on a day there's usually like a cookout there's food um like i said they just got the pizza oven so that's one thing they're excited pizza, to test burgers out and dogs nice. yeah that's, that's usually what it is um Midweek games, midweek tell you it's always a little different, uh, but it's honestly it's, it's pretty laid back. Music, music's playing, it, people are just sitting around talking. It's it, honestly it is, it's fun. It's fun vibes. That's it, that's and that's all that's all we bring. It's just it's just relaxing. I okay. wouldn't expect too many people getting bombed on a Wednesday. On a like, Wednesday, no. I would yeah. I would and I would say I'm gonna try to be. I I gotta. I'm I'm flying out to to Chicago. Chicago. The next morning, so I'm I'm gonna try to be pretty uh, pretty reasonable. Okay. I Devin, I also want to recommend definitely do the tailgate with Sons of Ben, but also do yourself the favor check out the Larimer Brewery, which is also next to the uh, to the practice field, but on the other side, okay. kind of like when you come in. That's that's been there since 2019 as well. It's a great addition to like the the game day experience. Like we'd never had a bar or anything to kind of go to, uh, especially for like the away fans. And they have really I've never had a bad beer there. Like they make all the beer there in house, and it's it's just a great addition there. So definitely before or after, a lot of people do go after, especially if we win. So definitely do yourself a favor, check out the Larimer Brewery as well. But there's always something to do down there. Awesome, yeah, I definitely will. Um. I think, oh, my, my last question. So the union sent me this jersey and then like an actual jersey. Which one do I wear tomorrow? Um, it's really, <laughs> it's honestly, it's really up to you. I'm assuming the jersey they sent you was the was the blue one, the 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 BY the the, the 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 one with the lightning bolts this year's away kit. It's just like navy blue. Oh, she got the the last oh she year. got the, the do poops. She got the, the do poops, which will be going away next year when they do the the new home jersey um honestly that's up to you i i always i like to kind of mix it up uh i usually try to go with whatever one they've either been winning with or they they've had better success i'm a little superstitious have being being a, a soccer player myself i tend to be on the slightly superstitious side okay. um but hey, it's it's whatever. I've also seen people that that match their their jerseys with their outfits. I I don't have that much that much to uh, to match together, so mine's usually kind of haphazardly looking. But if you got if you if you got shorts and and, a, and shoes that go with it, hey, let, All right. let, Def, let, Def. Let's, let's go. It's some it, 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 like I said, a soccer jersey can can complement an outfit. It's oh, just yeah. it's, it's how you ought to. It can. If you if you want to go like I usually sometimes go all navy blue and it, it's a real solid look. Some people go bright as all heck and it, it's hey it's whatever you feel comfortable with. That's what Devin, that's what I tell people. You 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 do you. Okay, good. Devin, <laughs> you know me. I I already have an outfit picked out. I do. I have the old outfits picked out in my head. So. But mm. definitely do definitely dress comfy. I, it's supposed to be nice tomorrow night, right? It's supposed to be yeah, like, it's supposed to be yeah. it's been a bit cooler this week, which is surprising for end of June. Mm. Yeah, it, it could be sometimes like especially like those early oh. of the season matches where it's like March and like my first ever union matches at Parasoto Philly, I went in just a hoodie and under armor under. I regretted that whole night. Oh, in March, that's that or like 
in July. I remember one July, it was against the fire, and it was one of the hottest days. And yeah. I had been at a pool, and I was tailgating, and like halftime, I almost passed out from heat exhaustion because yeah. it was like it was it was one of the muggiest days on record. So yeah, I would always say dress pretty comfortably and stuff that like if you were you know if I, I always say like dress like I'm going to the gym. Because it, if it's really warm, you it, it, you want to feel really somewhat comfortable. Yeah, for sure. I always say like any sporting event, like even early season Eagles games, I would way rather be cold at a sporting event. There's nothing – like even yesterday, I was like, thank God it's not going to be like this on Wednesday and you're just sitting there sweating. Ugh. <laughs> I'm glad it's going to be nice tomorrow. Absolutely, absolutely. Devin, seriously, thank you so much for coming on in. It, it, for we, me. We're honored. We're honestly honored to have you on here. You are just such a positive, bright light. I every time I see you on, on social media, you just have this big smile, and it's just it gives like a sense of positivity. Something we oh. do in Philadelphia <laughs> here right now. So seriously, thank you so much, Devin. Thank you. This was so much fun, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Of course, we'll of see course. you tomorrow. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Devin Caney. That is Justin Bag Balls against Guzan. I am Ed Parcero Philly, and we are telling you guys to do bond. Talk to you guys Thursday. Bye.